Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello, how is everybody? I'm going to be doing another movie review. This is a little bit older, it's Justice League. So Justice League came out in 2017. I will say right off the bat, I enjoyed the movie. I had a little bit of time now to go back and revisit some movies. This was one that even when I watched a good copy of it, maybe the mood I was in affected it. Now this movie's got a shitload of problems. A lot. But overall, watching it again, it's a movie that I'm happy was made. Uh, the way DC was going and, you know, it was just, it got me through and I enjoyed it at its day. Somewhat like Green Lantern, which has so many flaws, but the little kid in me is happy it was made and it's out there. And I watch it from time to time. So Justice League came out in 2017, directed by Zack Snyder. And in post-production, Josh Whedon took over and did a little bit of shooting. He's also credited as part of the screenplay. And it stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gail Gadot, Ezra Miller, Jason Momoa. Now, the movie has so much wrong with it, but when I see the characters on screen, so many interactions made me smile. I thought the plot was so hokey, the villain was terrible. And even though Marvel was able to pull off a semi bad terrible villain, the movie itself was really good. This movie's not really good great. It's a fun movie, but it feels clunky. It doesn't have a really, really good rhythm. However, I didn't look to see what shots were done by Josh Whedon or what he added to it. But some of the dialogue in this movie is so comic book, it's great. And I'm just, maybe I'm biased and I'm giving Josh Whedon the credit because I think his banter within characters and interactions is the best out there, starting with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. His use of the characters there... Strong points seem to come through in some scenes, even when certain characters or actors are seemingly out of place, if that, if that makes sense. However, yeah, so you got a director, and I shit on Zack Snyder for a, a while with those shitty dark movies. But you're dealing with a tragedy in your life, and maybe it's something that led up to it. Because if I look back at when my fiance passed away, before that it was 13 years of struggle and a fight. So I can imagine you're making movies and, you know, it impacts everything. It touches things. It taints it. I recently said something in one of my podcasts about one of my about my books that um looking back and seeing the first 13 chapters of the second book, I could see the struggle I went through was being expressed in the books. So real life can impact the books or your works, your creations. So Zack Snyder, I hope he's doing well. You made a couple of shitty movies, but look, that doesn't mean anything against the person who's home dealing with his family and any, you know, all that. So getting past that, I touched on it before, fun movie for me, childhood joy, seeing the characters interact, and they gave some props to characters, they did it kind of right, and you know, I'll give Zack Snyder the credit in that sense, it felt a little more like Avengers would, because the way they blended things in Avengers and everybody got their parts was done so well, that even if you were trying to go that way, it was a small way to go. And then you have the little interactions and little one-liners between them. And I kind of enjoy Ben Affleck as Batman. If I ever do a Batman v Superman, if 
fucking review. That movie, even the director's cut, which is a little better. The best scene in that movie for me was that Batman warehouse scene. It goes down as one of the best Batman scenes ever. It pulls through in here. Got some good stuff going on. It's tied together bad. The villain is just worthless in that way, you know, in a way that keeps you riveted to the stakes in the movie. And then there are weird things that happen in certain parts of the movie that don't feel right. I mean, the whole Superman, you know, was he dead at the end of the other movie? He's alive now. And, you know, let's bring him, how are we bringing him back? Okay, some of it worked for me. But looking at it again and watching it again, trying to give um, DC some more credit in a way. We've got all this time on our hands and going through TV shows and old movies. The good copies are out there now. You can find them easily on streaming services. And I find I enjoy the movie. Um, I don't know if my the critic in me would give it a high score if I ever came up with a system or... Would I gush over it and defend it? No, probably not. Much like Green Lantern, I don't defend that it's not a fucking bad movie, but it's a, I get joy out of it. I got joy out of this. I think Gail Gadot is good in almost everything I've seen her in and her presence here because of how well her movie is or did. Really pulls it together. Even Aquaman who I generally didn't enjoy his portrayal of the character. Works for me in, in the long run. With some scenes here and there, like I said, just a little clunky and feel out of order. But with everything that went on, with the director having to leave and finally deal with the death of his daughter, with someone else coming in, you know, with the cloud of like, oh, you know, I did the Avengers, the first two Avengers movies. I think it kind of, it pulled through for me. It, it breaks that threshold between me rolling my eyes every time I watch it and one of those things that you just get through. No, I mean, I kind of enjoy parts and it carries me enough that the parts that, that make me roll my eyes, it, it doesn't feel like it's a lasting impression that changes my perspective and carries through to the end. I mean, I might watch it again and again when and a friend comes over and I, I'll throw my hands up in the air like, this is fucking ridiculous. This doesn't make sense. But then they give you a nice scene, a dialogue, and one of my favorites is um, Jason Momoa is, uh, starts waxing poetic and um, just telling everybody I think he loves the movie. You know, he, and he realizes he's sitting on Wonder Woman's lasso. <laughs> I thought that was so good. Uh, Ezra Miller, who I didn't really enjoy seeing in those clips in the first movie, did okay for me. I don't find his personality fitting for the movie, but maybe I'm biased because I do think the TV show actor Flash is great at it. So, the Justice League. I, I give it a shot in the, in the whole of superhero movies that I would pick from. This is something I would watch again. I... I don't think I would avoid it. Now, get me wrong. I'm going to watch Thor Ragnarok, you know, another six times. I will watch it if it's on, if I catch it, if I see it. If um, I'm in the mood, like now I've been getting ready to do role playing and online and see if I can get people to join me. And I've been doing some tests, so I made some, I made two uh, games on some platform and I was getting back into the superheroes again and I thought I'd do some podcasts on DC movies and if I ever did one and started going into the Marvel ones I'll just do one on a whole Marvel cinematic universe but it's good to watch some of these the movies that touch something of my childhood especially in these times so stay healthy everybody Take care of your loved ones and family. I wish you all the best. I'll see you soon.